Greetings, everyone. My name is um, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and Progressive Discussions. I'm your host for this live stream Facebook show coming to you from the Facebook group, the International Brotherhood of Polyphons. Um, this group, um, along with the Facebook pages that I created, began in um, 2012. And uh, it's about old school, safe, drug free, physical fitness, health, nutrition, and the martial arts. Okay, and in this particular case, uh, these days we've been giving um, tips for men, particular, uh, particularly young men um, that are on lockdown and quarantine. And, and it is possible to get a good workout, a complete workout um, at home. And you don't need expensive equipment. You just need a series of uh, specific basic tools, uh, very simple, inexpensive tools, and that's all you really need to get an optimum workout. Okay, your muscles don't care as well. um, what kind of resistance you put on them. They don't care about the designer name on the equipment. Um, they don't care what the resistance is made out of, whether it's granite, limestone, iron, or steel. The only thing the muscles know is that you're putting stress and resistance on them. Uh, so it doesn't matter. If it's inexpensive uh, exercise, exercise power bands, or if it's a pair of uh, uh, dead blow hammers, or if it's a, um, a light um, sledgehammer uh, with a wooden handle, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it is. Or calisthenics, done with a pair of cheap foam yoga blocks. Now, I wanna welcome my guest and co-host, um, all natural, uh, competitive, uh, circular sh uh, trainer, uh, and kettlebell swinger and powerlifter, Mr. Jeff Zambello. Now, Jeff Zambello, unfortunately, the hawk nose Mark Zuckerberg is doing it again. It's letting me know, this time it's letting me know that you're posting comments, but it is not showing your comments on my screen during this live show. Okay, leave it up to the uh, low budget, uh, incompetent young programmers that he probably get, hires for free as interns fresh out of school because he's a cheap motherfucker. Okay. Be, uh, knowing the people from that tribe, if you know what I mean. The people from the tribe, you know what I mean? Wall Street? Okay. Um, they pinch a penny so hard that both heads and tails are on the same side. So, I want to begin by talking about uh, the people that uh, utilize social media. They create an account, a profile, and uh, some of them are too cowardly to use their uh, clear recent photographs, so they use an avatar or some symbol because they don't have the they don't have the balls to show their face on their social media profile. Now. I cannot see your comments, thanks to Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Sambell, so I will read and um, reply 
when this uh, live stream video is finished. Okay, uh, I can also download this video and put it on my YouTube channel. But you can thank Facebook for not showing your comments in real time as they are being post, posted. I don't run the company. I'm not a hawk-nosed piece of shit, control freak, geek, uh, miserly, greedy, uh, pile of excrement, pile of fecal matter like Mark Zuckerberg is. So if I was running Facebook, Number one, there will be no scammers allowed, and I'll make sure of that. Number two, my members would not be bombarded with constant spam advertisement shoved down their, their throat. Number three, I will not use the scam that Facebook uses called boost your post for $5. Oh yeah, every time you upload something, every time you post something on your Facebook page, you get a, a quick message. Zuckerberg offers to boost your profile for five dollars each. Yeah, that's a racket. That's racketeering. Yeah, yeah, boost my balls. Now, getting back to these people, getting back to these people that are on social media. Now, my late great uh, co-host, the Reverend Dr., uh, my, the, my original co-host, may he rest in peace, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman used to say that people go online for certain reasons. They go online to work, which includes doing their homework for school, school work, work, make, to make money, and to play. But today people also go online to get the real uncensored news, not the lies that you see on mainstream media. But there are people that log into social media uh, to have fellowship with others based on their hobbies. Or hot, no, in this case, it's always a hobby, an interest. Uno, one. So they have fellowship with people based on their hobby, which is fine. They, they create groups based on a hobby. Now, you notice I say one hobby. Uh, they might create a Facebook page based on their hobby. Uh, and they will have video group hangouts uh, either live stream or in private based on their hobby. Now, there are many different hobbies and interests, but the reason why I say one hobby is because there are people that have a specific hobby. Uh, let's say it's, let me think, let's say it's Mac macro, both macro beer and craft beer, and or hard liquor like bourbon, whiskey, uh, where where they you know they 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 discuss the uh, intricate deep details of uh, how to make uh, cheap ass beer just to get buzz loaded with chemicals like your um, nationally advertised American brands like Budweiser, Coors, Miller, or high quality old world style craft beer. They talk about the making of it, how to, the, the different variations of it, uh, and they give reviews. They do uh, taste tests, they give reviews, which is good, which is good. But many of these hobbyist social media groups have become uh, are, consist, are consisted of elitist snobs and 
Jeff Sambello is the reason why I'm bringing this up because I have personal experience with these uh, obsessive, fanatical people. They, all they talk about every fucking day and night is their one hobby. They're not well-rounded people. If you bring up another subject, they quickly cut you off and change the subject and go back to the discussion of beer or hard liquor. Most of them are fanatics about beer and they often get very drunk during a uh, either a private or a live stream show. They get quite intoxicated and to the point where they're slurring their speech. They're like hey what's everybody drinking? Cheers everyone cheers! They, they say that a million times. Oh is that beer sessionable? I, I, I assume it means it's not too strong. You can drink it every day. And believe me, many of them do drink it every day and all day long. So they end up drunk. They talk gibberish. They cut each other off. They try. Sometimes they light up a cigarette while they're having the beer. Sometimes they're so drunk they lay down on a, on a sofa or a lounge chair while they're going <laughs> drunk out of their minds. So these, these particular hobbyists, in my opinion, are closet alcoholics. They will never admit it, but I can tell by the way they speak. If they're doing an evening show and they're the type that drinks all day to do a late night show, or even, or even a mid-evening show, I can tell which ones are intoxicated. I can tell which ones are intoxicated. And the more serious connoisseurs that really know their shit about fermented beverages, I have never seen them intoxicated when they do a live stream show. They actually are quite sober and they're quite uh, intellectually detailed in their assessment and analysis and review of craft beer, cheap garbage, macro beers, or hard liquor of any kind. Could be bourbon, could be scotch whiskey, could be rum, could be whatever. Uh, and I'm not saying these people never get buzzed, but I would honestly say that 99.9% .9 of the time they, they, they do a live show, they're doing it intelligently and very sober. And the people that are at the top of their game are, I mention names because I'm proud of their work, not to be misconstrued. Number one, Mr. Ronald J. Terrio does very, very educational, sober, live stream review shows. John Anilli of Georgia also does similar high quality shows. Uh, Michael Komaroff of Brooklyn, New York also does very serious intellectual shows. Uh, the others do occasionally they do a good show but they I've seen them pretty buzzed, very intoxicated. But my problem is that most of them have no sense of humor, they have no personality, they have no pizzazz or charisma whatsoever. If, you are, if you're a person that is funny, naturally funny with a sense of humor, and you see jokes that you can't just let go and you go for the joke and you tell the joke they they all have like a poker face like robots like a mannequin like this they got that serious look on their face they know they don't smile they don't laugh and they will cut you off and change the subject quickly these are not well-rounded people these are not uh, free, I mean, uh, 
these are not independent, critical free thinkers. These are obsessive, fanatical cultists. Uh, I have been on the high quality Ronald J. Tirio shows uh, many times in the past. Actually, I did one recently called Wild Card Wednesday. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and ends around 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I do, I, when I do the Ronald J. Tirio shows, there are many followers who only type. They have keyboard courage. They don't have the, the guts to come on the show live and show their face. So they'll make derogatory comments about me because a lot of them are from the South and they're still fighting the Civil War. So they'll call me. They know I'm a, ver I'm a far left-wing political person and they'll call me names. They'll call me pre-Madonna instead of James P. Madonna. And, you know, they'll try to push my buttons because they're flag-waving, redneck, evangelical, religious, fanatical, freak, zealots, and, they'll, and they know my, how I am politically, so they'll try to push my buttons. Then you have the people that do have the guts to show their face on video. Ma many of them act drunk. Uh, they, they do not give a, a good review. You know, some actually say, uh, duh, uh, well, I have here, uh, duh, duh, beer. It's, uh, it, it's a Miller Genuine Draft, uh, and, uh, it has bubbles in it. It has effervescence. They don't even say effervescence. One guy says it's a beer and it has bubbles in it. Okay, that's not a review. But... Getting back to these people having no sense of humor, no personality, no pizzazz or charisma, they will not crack a smile or laugh or respond to my jokes. And when Ronald J. Tirio has to go to the restroom, you know, Mr. Tirio would say, James, I got, I got to go to the restroom. Why don't you keep on talking and, you know, during the show? I go, sure. So I'm talking and talking and talking. None of these, uh, none of these uh, closet alcoholics say a word while I'm talking. No comments. Nothing. Zip. The second Mr. Tirio returns from the restroom, they start talking because I guess that you know he's like the Pied Piper. He's got that that magic. So. Uh, but lots of times, the people on the show, the so-called connoisseurs of fermented beverages, don't crack jokes and laugh and have fun with their hobby. You know, a hobby is, is supposed to be enjoyable. You should be able to have fun with their hobby, with the hobbies, not be so stiff and serious. But many of them are very stiff and serious. Now, there are those that do have a sense of humor and love the hobby. Uh, Mr. Ronald Sutton of uh, Eastern Ohio has a great sense of humor. Uh, Dr. Dave, Dr. Dave himself from the, uh, the uh, outskirts of uh, the Cleveland, Ohio area has a great personality and a sense of humor and is capable of giving a very intellectual, deep, high quality review. Top of the line reviews with top of the line craft beers, no garbage. Dr. Dave. Uh, also, Ronald J. Tirio gives lots of education on his shows and great reviews, honest reviews. Um, you can also catch him, and, and he laughs at my jokes. He has a big smile on his face and he has the, the intelligence to recognize a sense of humor when he hears it. And he likes my antics. Now there are other people that have no life, that all they do is talk about their, the hobby. Let's say it's craft beer. And they get very impatient while I'm telling a story or cracking jokes.
they want me to just, like a robot, get to the review. Get to the review, finish the review, and be like a, a fucking robot. These people have no life. They have no life. They're miserable people. There's one I know in particular that has no patience uh, in listening to me uh, entertain and be funny and, and exhibit pizzazz and charisma. No, no. He has no desire to, uh, very impatient. E even Ronald J. Tirio noticed it immediately before I did. Yeah. Uh, yes, he's, uh, he resides in the part of the country called New England. New England. I'm not going to mention names. So, that's it. These people have no life, they have no personality, they have no sense of humor. They're cultists, whether it be the hobby of like those douchebag assholes that run this uh, Facebook group called Hot Dog Nation, where they actually uh, rent a bus and, and go on trips to all the popular hot dog spots. How pathetic that is. All they talk about is hot dogs on this group. And then you have other groups uh, that are fanatical about craft beer. One is called Honest Craft Beer Reviews. It's a cult. It's a dictatorship too. Because they, they really don't want honesty. They pretty much, they want you to kowtow to them and kiss their ass of the administrators. And uh, you have to agree with the administrators. If you debate them or disagree, they, they threaten to kick you out of the group. Oh wow, that's a shame. Like you're making money off of these hobbies. No, I don't know anyone who is who is fanatically and obsess, obsessively involved in a social media hobby that makes money off of the these shows. I mean, if they wanted to, they can set up a Patreon account with PayPal and ask for gift donations if they want. People can gift money to them, like uh, Coach Greg Adams, the uh, MGTOW, uh, red pill, men going their own way, male rights activist uh, uh, expert. He gets, a, he gets a fortune that is gifted to him through PayPal Patreon. But I don't know any of these obsessive fanatics with no sense of humor and no personality that have a uh, Patreon account. Now, uh, that's the deal. I'm going to continue being myself because creme de la creme, the cream always rises to the top. And as your cream rises to the top, there will be those out there that show jealousy and it is petty jealousy that you have the pizzazz and charisma, personality and sense of humor to do a live show and take the bull by the horns. Or like Archie Bunker used to say, take the bull by the corns and tell the real truth. Not be a fake phony and fraud and have a fake smile on your face like a car dealer. Like that, peng that fat penguin walking governor of uh, Florida the Republican governor. Reminds me of Boss Hogg with hair on his head. Talk about a lying, corrupt piece of shit. So, um, DeSantis, yeah. So anyway, DeSantis. Uh, I will continue to do uh, honest, hard-hitting shows and be myself and not be a two-faced um, or anybody like that, that uh, anybody who uh, bears false witness uh, on thy neighbor, with thy neighbor. How does that go again? Thou shalt not bear false witness uh, against thy neighbor, something like that. So anyway, to change the subject, we're going to talk about the racketeering carnival snake oil charlatans in the um, in the old school physical fitness industry that have uh, capitalized and exploited 
the the American fad, the Western Hemisphere fad, uh, which is uh, takes place in the United States, Canada, and Europe, called circular training. They have taken this ancient warrior sport and turned it into a racketeering uh, enterprise to make a fast buck by conducting seminars in various areas. They, they find uh, a venue that's large enough and they promote it and they charge ridiculous ridiculously high rip-off prices like as, as much as a thousand dollars a person for people to attend their seminar and all they're doing is showing demonstrating the steel mace or gata not the original gata from India made of a bamboo pole and a stone block at the end or a stone uh, ball Usually it's concrete. No, they're not. It's not that. It's a, it's a steel mace that's being mass produced, most likely in China, and uh, sold at a premium price. And the seminars are taking, let's say, several hundred to a thousand dollars a person um, to show not only the few basic moves that this exercise tool was meant to be used for. In reality, the, the mace or gata uh, and the kettlebell was only designed for a few basic movements, a few basic swings. So what they do during the seminar is they add a lot of cheap filler, like, like putting white rice into a burrito so you get less meat Yes, it's cheap filler. They fill it up with, with personal stories, jokes, uh, a lot of bullshit where the person doing the seminar paces back and forth telling stories. And then there are these new modern made up exercises just to fill in time to make the thousand dollars a head uh, justifiable. They, I mean, they don't want to. They don't want to just show you the primary basic uh, exercises for the kettlebell or the maze, or let's say the Bulgarian bag. You know what I mean? It's like there really is only like a few basic swings that these devices were invented for. So they add all these made-up modern exercises just to fill up time, the two, three hours that the seminar goes for. And uh, these other exercises are pretty much uh, eh, either leverage or one-dimensional uh, um, multi-joint basic exercises that you would normally do with dumbbells a barbell or machines or or power bands okay they're, they're they're basic traditional strength training exercise that the swinging device was not meant to be used for okay so all these modern made-up exercises and there are people out there that come out they want to they want to set the world on fire and, and they come out with their own workout systems and they add up all their new and in invented exercises so because they want they want people to give them attention and kiss their ass and 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 and, and give them praise and, and free validation so someday they could charge money and be a capitalist uh, scumbag so they uh, it's a racketeer. It's a racket. It's a racket. It's a ra it's racketeering, doing these seminars like I just explained. Uh, the made-up exercises are not meant to be used with these uh, circular training, ancient warrior tools. Um, in reality, there there's only like a few basic swings for any 
one of these tools. The mace, the kettlebell, the Bulgarian bag, or even the, the, the Chinese uh, stone lock, which is usually made of granite. But that, that's, the, that's how the kettlebell was invented, from the, uh, the Shaolin monks and the, you know, the Chinese who have used uh, a stone lock which has a practical purpose. Just like the Japanese on Okinawa used uh, farm tools and converted them into martial arts weapons. Okay, all those tools like the nunchucks and various others were originally farm tools. Same thing with the, with the Chinese Shaolin. So they, they adopted these basic popular farm tools into martial art weapons. Uh, so, the kettlebell came from the stone lock. Now, there's only, there's only a few basic swings, but the Western Hemisphere, mostly the American uh, greedy capitalists, have uh, turned this, uh, these old ancient warrior um, exercises and added their own invented exercises to get people to part with their money. Uh, many of them have no physical fitness credentials in their background whatsoever. Um, I, 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 I'll, give you, I'll give you, there's very few people that have credentials. Richard Army McGuire, Ken Thiessen, William Calvani, Kashi Azad, Okay, that's it. The rest of them are a bunch of ham and eggers. They're just riding the coattails of the founding fathers that popularized uh, this ancient sport. Um, if it wasn't for um, for Carl Gotch, the the Gata and the exercises of the Akara and, and the Kushti of both Varanasi and Punjabi India, they would not have been popularized in the West, in the United States, if it wasn't for uh, the late, great, former professional wrestler uh, uh, Carl Gotch, who took uh, Jake Shannon under his wing and uh, Jake Shannon continues the tradition. So Carl Gotch popularized uh, the Akara exercises in the West, uh, being that the West is so bigoted and prejudiced, uh, they would have left these ancient exercises and uh, grappling, exercise, grappling wrestling over there in Asia. Also, the Iron Sheik uh, who won? Uh, who won a? Uh, who won? Who won a medal in the in the Pan Am Games uh, uh, for the uh, country of Iran uh, for Greco-Roman wrestling back in the early 1960s? He later became a famous superstar professional wrestler and was the former uh, World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. Uh, managed by the Ayatollah Freddie Blassie, and uh, he's retired now. But he is the one that introduced the, by demonstration, introduced the Persian meals or the Persian clubs to the United States when he used to do the Persian club challenge and bring them in a ring, and he would swing them, and no American athlete was able to swing the Persian clubs because they issued uh, Persian club challenges a, a, a few times and, uh, and you had your top uh, power lifters and uh, bodybuilders that were unable to swing the Persian clubs. So Iron Sheik popularized it. I dedicate, I dedicate this Facebook uh, group the International Brotherhood of Polyvance to uh, uh, 
Kaz, uh, Kazro Vasili. That's his real name. Um, I think it's um, Hussein Kazro Vasili. Kaz, well, Kazro. Kazro Vasili. Uh, dedicate, I, from, very, from the very beginning, I dedicated this Facebook um, uh, group to Kazro Vasili, the Iron Sheik. And also to the god of strength and power, the Hindu god Hanuman, Hanuman, from the uh, Hindu religion in India. I, I dedicated to him too. Uh, there is a particular person who is uh, long and lanky and very tall, who uh, is um, who conducts these racketeering uh, seminars on the uh, steel mace. He told me, he told an Indian member of this group, I don't care about your Hindu monkey god. I could care less. Uh, I think he, he went to Varanasi, India because other people in circular training went there and he did not want to be the, the only one uh, that is popular in circular training not to go. Uh, Paul Wokowinski, or Paul, Paul Tear Ass Wokowinski, went to Varanasi, and also uh, William, William Calvani went to Varanasi. Uh, and um, uh, you know, others have gone in the community, and then, but, but the long stream of urine analysis from Southern California that does seminars, he had to go because he has such a huge ego and uh, he considers he considers himself to be the top banana in the business and he wants to be the only monopolizing top banana in circular training. Meanwhile, he has no physical fitness background whatsoever. None. None whatsoever. Uh, he doesn't, him and Paul Tear S. Wokowinski, um, have no martial arts and or f physical fitness credentials in their background. Okay, they just, they're self-proclaimed gurus, self-proclaimed. Um, and this person from Southern California is only a forklift operator in a warehouse. That's it. But I won't mention any names. Uh, gee, I wonder if the IRS knows that some of these sh uh, carnival charlatan snake oil people receive payment in cash in a uh, white envelope. I wonder if the Internal Revenue knows this. Wink, wink, nod, nod. I wonder if the wives of such charlatans that do circular training seminars uh, know that the, whatever they are told is just an alibi for them not to go straight home because they have, uh, they have specific groupies, uh, female groupies that are fans of theirs that they secretly spend time with. I'm, I wonder if their wives really know the truth about what they say to them. Uh, I am 110% accurate in what I say and sober and I'm telling you the, the God's honest truth in this live stream show concerning the obsessive um, fanatical cultists that have no life they only have their one hobby they only talk about one subject they only talk about one subject only between them and the, the scamming, uh, racketeering charlatans of the circular training world, uh, 
what I'm telling you is extremely on the money and accurate information. Now, why does Mark Zuckerberg, the control freak, hawk nose geek, have so many glitches in his programs? Why does he do many things? Why does he steal people's personal information and sell it? Why does he bombard people with constant spam? Why does he try to, to scam people out of $5 to boost your post, your uploads? Why does he allow uh, many international scammers to come into Facebook? Why does he have a defective, two defective programs? One is called Facebook Messenger that has glitches galore. And even more glitches galore is the Facebook program that allows you to do a live stream video show. I mean, someone else I know when he goes live stream can have somebody come on the show by way of video camera. When I do it, it doesn't work. Um, also, I used to be able to see the, the viewers' comments in uh, of, of real time. You know, as the show was happening, I, I would see the comments of going across the screen. That stopped. I don't see it. I know Jeff Zambello is with me, but I don't see his comments. You know, so you're talking about a cheap motherfucker with a hawk nose that's a geek. Because we, we always hated, us, us athletes in high school, we always hated the geeks. The geeks were uh, very antagonistic people. Okay. He, I bet he has interns in uh, majoring in computer programming, outsourced, or wherever they are. They're working for free. They're probably working for free. They're working for uh, school credits. Because he is a cheap, greedy motherfucker like the rest of his tribe. And, uh, uh, oh, and, and one of the, uh, one of the charlatan crooks that does uh, Steel May seminars, his buddy and her, and her boyfriend make defective, loadable mace. Which means that when you fill the, the ball at the end and you try to exercise with it, it detaches and becomes a dangerous projectile. Like it happened to a, a gymnasium owner in the Belfast, Northern Ireland area. Uh, this person almost clobbered uh, one of his... Uh, gym members because the the mace detached and what did the person from the united states say behind the back of this this irishman that that owns a gym he, he mocked his irish brogue he mocked his accent and he complained profusely that the irishman complained about the defective detachable mace made by a big mouth, very short, diminutive, uh, feminazi, uh, a militant feminist that is very short, that, like all her friends, female friends, brag about her athletic ability, and she talks nonstop, like, a, like, a, like an infomercial. She flaps her gums, she talks a lot of shit, they all talk a lot of shit. They're all like infomercial uh, pitchmen, salespeople. Uh, like the infomercials you hear late at night. Like the products that end up not really working, that you spent money on. And they're doing the same thing with, the, with circular training and the steel mace. They are screwing people over. They are so greedy. They are so petty that when a great man like Mr. Kashi Azad of 
Persian yoga, came to Southern Connecticut to do a seminar all the way from Sydney, Australia. Not one other gym owner in the United States, not even in the Northeast, nobody bothered to contact him in Connecticut at the hotel he was staying at. Nobody bothered to uh, contact Kashi Azad and book him to do seminars in their gyms. He, that man should have been booked all over the United States at every alternative fitness gym that features circular training. But oh, but no. He's an uh, honorable, honest man of integrity. This steel mace fad, cult, it, it became a cult, really. This steel mace cult, they don't want to book an honest man of integrity that is from the martial arts world. Not at all. Another, another great man is uh, Mr. Daniel Ramsey, the uh, proprietor, the uh, owner of... Um, New Breed Fitness in my hometown uh, on Garibaldi Avenue, Lodi, New Jersey. I just want to give a shout out to him too, along with the other honorable people uh, in the martial arts world and in circular training. The ones I mentioned before, Richard Army McGuire, Kent Thiessen, William Calvani. Uh, Kashi Azad, and now uh, Daniel Ramsey, and, his, uh, and that's it. So, thank you for joining me for this show. I will now, being that it's so beautiful uh, outside, cool and dry for two days, and then the 90 degree Fahrenheit with high humidity comes back Saturday morning, I'm going to take a walk to Trader Joe's and get some high quality food. Uh, it's right on the Hudson River here and it should be a beautiful breezy walk along the walkway that we have that goes for miles, which is like a park. So I'm going to do that. Thank you everyone for viewing and those that will view this pre-recorded uh, show. Uh, and also thanks to my co-host, Mr. Jeff Zambello. Jeff Zambello will be participating in the future in a wonderful series of events known as the Vintage Games. Uh, I believe uh, Frank DeMeo is uh, one of the uh, part of the management team, the upper management team. Uh, and um, the Vintage Games, uh, right now they are prioritizing uh, competition mace swinging. Um, the, only, the only time I say good things about the steel mace is if it has a long handle that is hollow and the steel handle is much lighter, and I repeat, much lighter than the weight at one end. Therefore, it has high torque. I still think that a long hickory wood handle, which is the most durable, and uh, or, or a bamboo, is better. Um, some people choose to use a, a shovel handle, but make sure it's hickory and uh, make sure you treat it so it doesn't crack on you. Uh, but there are companies out there, um, not many, but there are a few companies, if you go on Amazon Prime you can find them, uh, that make a steel mace with a longer steel handle that is hollow inside and lightweight because you must have maximum torque when you're swinging any club, uh, Indian club, 
or mace or gata. You have to maintain maximum torque. But anyway, take care, people.